Hello, my name is Louise McCluskey and I am going to present this e-lecture on cross-section classification to Eurocode 3. This presentation is broken up into three sections, an introduction followed by an in-depth analysis of the procedure to classify cross-sections using Eurocode 3 and some examples at the end. Whether in the elastic or inelastic ra material range, cross-sectional resistance and rotation capacity are limited by the effects of local buckling. As in BS5950, Eurocode 3 accounts for the effects of local buckling through cross-section classification. The sections of the Eurocodes which are therefore relevant to this lecture are clauses 5.5 which covers the actual cross-section classification and clauses 6.1 and 6.2 which cover the cross-section resistance. The web and flanges of rolled steel sections are significantly slender compared to their length and breadth and are prone to distorting, which is commonly referred to as local buckling. This is a diagram showing local buckling of the top flange of a beam. And here is a photograph to show you the local buckling of a flange in a real life situation. So you'll notice here that it is the bottom flange which is buckled. And this is a diagram showing local buckling of the web inside a column with an axial compression load. And here's a photograph to show you the local buckling of a web in a real life situation. So that is the introduction finished, and the next section that I will go through will cover the cross-section classification method using Eurocode 3, and also touch upon the cross-section resistance to bending. In Eurocode 3, cross-sections are put into one of four behavioural classes depending on the yield strength, the width to thickness ratio of the individual compression parts and the loading arrangement. The four classes are similar to those used in BS5950. So we have class 1, which will be equivalent to plastic, class 2, which will be equivalent to compact, class 3, semi-compact and class 4 will be equivalent to slender. The classes are ranked in order of their susceptibility to local buckling of class 4 the most likely to succumb to local buckling and class 1 the least likely. So these are the definitions of the classes taken directly from Eurocode 3 clause 552. So class 1 cross sections are those which can form a plastic hinge with the rotation capacity required from plastic analysis without the reduction of the resistance. Sorry. Um, class 2 cross sections are those which can develop their plastic moment resistance but have limited rotation capacity because of their local buckling. Class 3 sections cross sections are those in which the stress in the extreme compression fibre of the steel member, assuming an elastic distribution of stresses, can reach the yield strength, but local buckling is liable to prevent development of the plastic moment resistance. And class 4 cross sections are those in which local buckling will occur before the attainment of yield stress in one or more parts of the cross section. So here is a diagram showing the four behavioural classes of cross sections as defined by Eurocode 3. You can see that class 1 cross sections can reach and maintain their full plastic moment in bending, so they can be used in plastic design. Class 2 sections are also capable of reaching their, plas their plastic their full plastic moment in bending, but the rotation capacity is limited compared to class 1 sections. And class 3 sections do not reach their full plastic moment in bending, and their bending moment resistance is limited to the elastic yield moment. Class 4 sections fail by local buckling in the elastic range. Limits between the different classes depend on epsilon, which is calculated using the yield strength of the steel used. So here we have the equation for epsilon for both BS5950 and Eurocode 3. And you will see that they're almost the same, except that Eurocode 3 uses a base value of 235. And that's because S235 steel is regarded as the most widely used throughout Europe, whereas BS5950 uses a base value of 275. This slide shows an extract from table 3.1 of Eurocode 3 which contains values for the yield strength and the ultimate tensile strength values for hot rolled steel. The nominal yield strength depends on the steel grade, the standard to which it is produced and the nominal thickness of the steel element. For design in the UK, the UK National Annex states that the nominal values of the yield strength and the ultimate yield strength should be taken from the product standards. Therefore, you should not refer to this table for the design of steel structures in the UK and instead must refer to the product standards. So since the UK National Annex tells us to refer to the product standards, here is an extract from Table 7 from EN 10025-2 and here there are four columns of thickness limits 
and you'll notice that as the thickness increases, the yield strength decreases. Just like table 3.1, the strength values depend on the steel grade, the standard to which it is produced, and the nominal thickness of the steel element. I've already touched upon this term epsilon, and I said that Eurocode 3 works it out as the square root of the base value 235 divided by the yield strength. We covered how to get the yield strength in the previous slide, so we can either substitute that value into the equation, or we can simply refer to the bottom of table 5.2 in Eurocode 3, where they have calculated the value for, of epsilon for a range of yield strength, so we can save time and simply read the value from this table. So table, this is table um, 5.2. And it's made up of three sheets. This is sheet one and it's for internal compression parts. And each compressed element is compared to the limiting width to thickness ratios for class one, two and three defined in this table. An element that fails to meet class three limits should be taken as class four. The width to thickness ratios, i.e. the C over T ratios, are worked out using the dimensions shown at the top of this table. So this is the top of sheet one and you can see clearly the definitions of the compression widths. So the value of the compression width C, as defined in sheets 1 and 2, adopts the dimensions of the flat portions of the cross section. Therefore, root radii and wells are excluded from the measurement, and this is different to the measurements used in BS5950. This is the bottom of sheet 1, and you can see at the very bottom the values for epsilon, and we've already talked about those. We have four columns, so the first is the different classes, so 1, 2 and 3. The next column is the limits for the part subject to bending. The third column is limits for the part subject to compression, and the fourth column is limits for the part subject to bending and compression. This is sheet 2 of table 5.2, and this sheet is for outstanding flanges, and again, at the bottom we have the values for epsilon. So we have the three classes on the left and the different limits. And this is sheet 3, and it's dealing with angles and tubular sections. For circular hollow members, the width to thickness ratios are modified by epsilon squared rather than epsilon. So that's table 5.2. To make sure the resistance of, a, of the cross section to bending is adequate, then the following equation must be satisfied. MED divided by MCRD must be less than or equal to 1. This is expressed in 612, and what it is telling us is that the design moment MED must be less than the cross section moment resistance MCRD. And now, as you'll see in the next few slides, the equation to calculate MCRD will depend on the class of the section. So here in this table, I've included the class 1 limits and the relevant equation for the design bending resistance for both TS5950 and Eurocode 3, so that you can compare the two. Overall, the class limits are not that different, and you should also note that Eurocode uses TF and TW for the flange and wave thicknesses, respectively, rather than capital T and small t used in BS5950. And we can see that Eurocode 3 uses the plastic design resistance, as denoted by the subscript PL, and when broken down, the equation is not that dissimilar to the one used in BS5950. In 5950, we have PY, the yield strength, and in Eurocode 3, FY, the yield strength. In 5950, we have the plastic modulus, SX, and in Eurocode 3, the pl plastic modulus, WPL. So really not, not much has changed, except the notation. So here are the class 2 limits, and again, you will notice a change in the class limits between BS5950 and Eurocode 3, but the design bending resistance for both is exactly the same as that for class 1. So, therefore, the design bending resistance expression for class 1 and 2 is the same, and it is the plastic modulus times the yield strength divided by a partial factor. And the expression for the design bending resistance for class 1, 2 and, sec one, class one and 2 sections in Eurocode 3 is equation 613. And here are the class 3 limits, and again you can see the difference in the class limits between 5950 and Eurocode 3, so 15, 14, 120, 124, so really not much change. But unlike class 1, class 2 sections, which made use of the plastic design resistance, MPLRD, class 3 sections use the elastic design resistance denoted by the EEL subscript. The design bending resistance expression for a class 3 section is the elastic modulus times the yield strength divided by a partial factor. And this is expression 614 in Eurocode 3. So now we come to class 4. Unlike 5950, Eurocode 3 classifies a section as class 4 if it does not meet the requirements of the class 3 limits. Here, the design bending resistance is equal to the effective modulus WF min times the yield strength divided by a partial factor. And this is expression 615 in Eurocode 3. 
Clause 552 Part 6 states that a cross section is classified according to the highest, that's the least favourable class of its compression parts, or alternatively, Clause 552 Part 7 states that the classification of a cross section may be defined by quoting both the flange classification and the web classification. So here's a summary of the class limits and the corresponding moment capacity equations used in Eurocode 3. In hot roll design, the majority of standard cross sections will be class 1, 2 or 3. Notice the pattern of the equation for the moment of capacity. There is the modulus times the yield strength divided by a partial factor. And it's only the modulus that changes, and that is determined by the class. Class 4 sections contain slender elements that are susceptible to local buckling. To make allowance for the reduction in resistance as a result of local buckling, then we use effective widths. Since it is very rare that we will have a class 4 hot roll section, I'm not going to go into any detail about how to work out the effective widths, but the next slide will show you will show where you should refer to if the need arises. So to calculate the effective width of class 4 sections, we need to refer to the relevant section in the Eurocode. So EN 1993 part 13 for cold form sections, EN 1993 part 15 for hot rolled and fabricated sections, and for circular hollow sections we refer to EN 1993 part 16. So here is a summary of the design steps. So the first step is to work out the yield strength of the section, so it is FY. In the core Eurocode document, there is table 3.1, which gives values for the yield and ultimate tensile strength for different steel grades and thicknesses. But for the design in the UK, which is what we are concerned with, we will need to refer to the product standards. So using the value of FY from step one, we need to work out the value of epsilon, and you can do that by using the equation or simply by looking at the bottom of table 5.2. The next step is to go to table 5.2 and get the class limits for the different parts, so for the flange and the web. Substitute the value of epsilon into the limits and compare the, the width to thickness ratio to determine the class of the individual part. And step 4 is about classifying the overall section, and that will be the least favourable class from the flange or web. So those are the steps required to determine the class of a section, and there's really nothing too difficult there. So now that we've gone through the theory, I'm going to run through a few examples to help further your understanding. So this is an example from the XSD website, and we have a 356 times 171 times 51 UB in grade S275 steel. And the first thing that we need to do is class that. So here we have a list of the section properties that we will need in order for us to classify a section and calculate the design bending moment resistance. So the first step is to determine the yield strength of the section. So to get FY. And the UK National Annex will tell us to refer to the product standards. So here is table 7 from EN 10025-2. And we can see that the largest thickness, which is the flange thickness TF, is 11.5. In table 7, there are several thickness limits. But for this example, it is clear that 11.5 is less than 16 millimeters. And we know that the sealed grade is S275. So if we read across the table, we get a value for FY, the yield strength, and that is 275 newtons per millimetre squared. So that's the first step done, and next we have to determine epsilon from table 5.2. So at the very bottom of table 5.2, we have these values for epsilon, and we've just determined that the yield strength, FY, is 275 newtons per millimetre squared. So reading down, we can see that the corresponding value of epsilon for 27 grade sorry, for a yield strength of 275 newtons per millimetre squared is 0.92. And now that we have epsilon, the next step is to substitute it into the class limits so that we can determine the section class. So first of all, we're going to deal with the outstand flange, and that's um, on sheet 2 of table 5.2, and we have to determine the width to thickness ratio, and for that we need the value of C, so we use this expression, C equals B minus TW minus 2R divided by 2. And that's slightly, that'll give a slightly larger value than BS5950, where you would have used capital B over W. So substituting in the values, we get C equal to 71.85, and we divide that by the flange thickness, TF, which is 11.5, and we get 6.25. The class 1 limit of the flange outstand is 9 epsilon, and that's equal to 8.26. 8.28, sorry. And since the width to thickness ratio is less than the class 1 limit, the outstand flange is class 1. Now we need to do the same for the internal compression part, i.e., the web. 
So in this case, C equals H minus 2TF minus 2R, and that's the same as you would have used in BS5950, except that the terminology is a bit different. So C works out as 311.6, and we divide that by the well thickness, TW, which is 7.4, to get 42.1. And the class 1 limit for internal compression parts is 72 epsilon, and that's equal to 66.24. Therefore, the web's also class 1. So now that we have determined the classes of the flange and the web, we need to determine the overall section class. So this is step 4. And the overall class of the section is the highest class between the flange and the web. In this case, both parts are class 1. Therefore, the overall section will be class 1. And now that we know the overall class, we know that for class 1 sections, ultimate limit state verifications should be based on the plastic resistance. We're going to run through the same example, but this time using CSC TEDs. Again, we have a 356 times 171 times 51 UB in grade S275 steel. And here are some of the section properties from that beam. And we're going to classify the section. So the first thing that they have done is to work out the yield strength. And they've got a value of 275 newts per millimetre squared. And they've got that from table 3.1. And the note below says that the National Annex may impose the values from table 3.1 or the product standards. In the UK, we have to refer to the product standards, but for a maximum thickness of 11.5mm in grade S275 steel, the yield strength, according to the product standards, will still be 275Nm. And the next stage is to determine epsilon, so that's 0.92, and then to use it to work out the class limits. For the outstanding flange, we can see that the CT ratio is, is less than 9 epsilon, therefore it's class 1. And for the internal compression part, we can see that the T, C over T ratio is less than 72 epsilon, and it's also class 1. So the overall class section is the highest class between the flange and the web, and since both are class 1, the overall section is class 1, which is the same as the hand calculation result. Now to save time working out the classification of a section by hand, you could refer to the blue book, and here's a screenshot of the interactive blue book, and under the bending moment option you can get the classes of the UK beams and columns. So if you're looking to determine the class of a section quickly and easily, this is definitely an option. So here, 254 times 254 times 89 UC in grade S355 steel is class 1, and a 254 times 254 times 73 UC in grade S2 in grade S355 steel is class 2. When you are carrying out the analysis of a beam or column using master series software, the class of this section is automatically worked out during the analysis and can be viewed as shown in the screenshot. So we know that a 254 times 254 times 73 UC in grade S355 steel is class 2, and that's the same answer that we determined from the interactive blue book in the previous slide. So now we have covered how to classify a section and determine the cross section resistance in detail, you will then be able to go on to design beams and columns. Thank you.